I'm Ruth Kleinfaster, and I'm on the hunt for bugs in the entertainment business. And let me tell you, there's one bug around here that tops the bill, cicadas. When it comes to pumping up the volume, these guys would give a heavy metal band a run for their money. Can you hear that? That's seriously loud. How loud? Well, let's do a quick comparison. First up, city traffic. Look at that, 85 decibels. Woo! Eight hours of that noise causes hearing loss. That's the downtown noise. Surely the bugs can't compete with a busy street. Look at that, 85 decibels, and it's all natural. So, what is all the fuss about? Why are these guys making such a racket? I think it's time to catch one. Here he is, the neighborhood noisemaker. Not everybody is entertained by them. They find them a darn nuisance. But I don't. I think they're great. <laughs> now, I'm claiming that they're great entertainers and singers for the likes of me. But they're not doing it for me. Of course not, don't you? They're doing it for the girls. You see, the males... We've got a very specific song. Each species has its own song. <laughs> and the females are tuned to listen for the males of their own species. Isn't that right, boy? Cicada sounds are quite different from those of other insects. An example, beetles and crickets usually rub body parts together. A bit like this. But then a lot quicker. That's called stridulation. Cicadas don't use stridulation. You see those little pads under his wings? They're called timbles. The cicada flexes his abdominal muscles and buckles his timbles in and out, making a series of rapid sound pulses or clicks. Just like this clicker. Only a lot faster than I can do it. Some Australian species can sing as loud as 120 decibels. That's as loud as I can shout! And seriously close to the pain barrier. I've heard them. They're terrible! They are the loudest bug on the planet and can be heard up to half a mile away. Cicadas like this can live underground for two to six years. But in North America, there's the so-called periodic cicada. It can live underground for 13 or 17 years. As the young cicadas grow underground, their mums and dads in the treetops play a vital role in the food chain. By the end of summer, most are eaten by birds and other predators. But when spring returns, a new generation of cicadas crawl to the surface. Now it's their turn to find a mate. And that's when the heavy metal record starts all over again. But it's nice to know that next year, for a couple of warm summer months, the air will be filled with sweet love songs. Hey! The sounds of sunny summer days are also filled with the buzzing of bees. Now, watching bees work flowers is entertaining in itself, but the real performance starts when the bees arrive back at the hive. Before they unload their nectar, it's crucial they first hit the, well, dance floor. All honeybees are expert dancers. They have to be, because their lives depend on it. You see, when a scout arrives back at the hive with a bit of nectar, it's going to save everyone time if she can tell them exactly where to find it. But how do you tell your hive mates how to find a particular flower if you haven't got lips or a voice box? When a foraging bee finds a good load of nectar, she heads home with three important pieces of information. Number one, the smell and taste of the food source. Ooh, that's nice. And secondly, the distance it's away from the hive. 147, 148, 149, 150, 150 yards exactly. Now thirdly, she knows the direction back to the food source by measuring the angle away from the sun. Now, armed with that information, she enters the hive and communicates it. She does it with a dance. 
It's called the waggle dance. The way she dances indicates the distance to the food. A fast-paced short dance means the food is nearby. A slower-paced one means it's further away. Now, to show you just how clever the bees are, I've brought along a friend to help me demonstrate. Dogs are easily trained. They've been domesticated now for thousands of years. They do all sorts of jobs for us. And they also guard our property. But the nicest thing is, we kind of share a common language. They listen to us. Hey, Cheetah, come over here. Good girl. Sit. Good girl. Now, Cheetah, listen. Speak to me. Speak. <coughs> Speak. <coughs> Good girl. Cheetah here knows dozens of commands. Absolutely dozens. She's trained beautifully. But when the commands get a little bit more complicated, things might become uh, a bit difficult for Cheetah. Let's try it out. Now listen, Cheetah. 121 yards in that direction, about 17 degrees away from the sun. That's the southeast. There's a red flower there. And it smells like grapes. And now it would be wonderful if you could go and get that for me. Off you go. Go to those flowers. No, 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 honestly, you can do it. Even though dogs are real smart, taking directions comes much more naturally to bees. They can even read road maps made by us humans. When a robotic bee is placed inside a hive, scientists can program the waggle dance to send the real bees exactly where they want to. Now, add to all this that this dance is performed in the dark of the hive, and that even when it's cloudy, the bees know exactly where the sun is. Now, that to me deserves an Academy Award. My name is Ruud Kleinpaster, and you're watching Buggin' with Ruud on Animal Planet. I've been traveling the world, searching out bugs that keep us entertained and keeping myself amused too.